Welcome and thank you for joining us for our first TopCon Live Q&A. Today we will be showcasing our crop care solutions and giving you the opportunity to enter the competition to win an XD and AGM1 manual guidance kit. Now to enter the competition, you will need to register and submit a relevant question in relation to TopCon's crop care services. Thank you to everyone who's already submitted questions. We will do our best to answer as many as possible live. Any we can't answer live will be answered in follow-up. So hi, my name's Michelle Quirk. I'm a technical trainer for TopCon here in Adelaide, and this is my colleague, Matt Christopherson. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. Yeah, my name's Matt. I'm one of the regional sales, sales managers in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and today we'll be talking about crop care, and although TopCon have a wide range of solutions for your whole farm. Today we'll be focusing on crop care, so under that banner comes spraying and spreading. So behind us today we've got a full range of the crop care solutions and we've got a video of how they work in field to get us going, so let's go to that. Crop care is a multi-stage, multi-faceted and intricate part of agriculture. From seeding control to nutrient spreading to spraying and boom control to crop monitoring, at TopCon, we've designed a number of interconnected solutions built on our time and field tested range of products that all serve this vital operation. Crop care begins with proper nutrient management. Whether dealing with commercial fertilizers or organic sources, it's important to have economically and environmentally sustainable farm operations. When considering your spreading operations, the Athene Plus Scale Link solution from TopCon offers greater functionality for premium spreader owners. When paired with the ISOBUS UT, the Athene Plus Scale Link Spreader Control solution provides premium spreaders with variable rate functionality. Some of the key features are accurate and variable rate applications responsive to different field areas and conditions manual or automatic adjustment rates according to predefined treatment maps, ISOBUS TC GEO compliance, automatic on-off spreading to avoid overlap and misses. We've been the industry leader in spraying technology for 20 years and we're proud to share the future of spraying technology in our Apollo application controllers. When it comes to spraying control, TopCon offers a progressive and future-proof solution Equipped with impactful features including fence jet nozzle support and recipe calculator, as well as direct software support via Pentair Hydro Pro Stop e valves, farmers can now control 200 plus sections down to individual nozzles, giving incredibly precise spray application. When coupled with the TopCon Agriculture Platform or TAP, Farmers can upload various data such as soil, seed yield and as applied to improve spraying decisions. With technology based on TopCon's core competency in optics, CropSpec is an industry-leading real-time crop monitoring solution that allows users to monitor in-field variability, treat on the go or keep data for future analysis. CropSpec is a one or two sensor configuration that is light and easy to install. With the largest sensor footprint in the industry, the sensor uses pulsing laser diodes to measure plant reflectance to determine chlorophyll content based on nitrogen concentration in the leaf. This non-destructive method provides accurate, stable readings with insights that help reduce fertilizer costs and can create prescription maps or prescribe and apply in a single pass. In order to utilise the improved capabilities of both sprayers and precision capabilities, automation is increasingly important. Our NORAC boom height control provides consistent preset height for even application and reduced drift. Our UC7 boom height control solution makes responsive height adjustments allowing booms to automatically follow the contours of the land or height of crop. The ultrasonic sensors are capable of day and night or high-speed operation and the solution is designed for ease of use with compatibility across a wide range of machines in standalone or ISOBUS capabilities. Together, our crop care solutions allow the hardest jobs to be done with ease and precision. So 
So Matt, you might like to show us some of the products that we've just seen in that video. Hopefully that's also stimulating people to start thinking about those questions that you need to submit so that you can get in an entry to win the competition. Yeah, sure. So there's a lot of info on that video and a lot of different applications. So yeah, behind me, I'm going to go through each one, uh, the user interface and the ECUs and just show over what they look like and how they work and, and how you can use them. So starting over here, uh, this is a granular belt um, spreader. So this is a Thene ECU and just below here, can we see that? Yep. Uh, this is the ECU that's mounted on the spreader and up here back on the Topcon X35, we have what the user interface would look like. So if we can zoom in on that. So if you were to use an Athene ECU in your cab, this would be a typical example of what you could, what you could see. So in the middle here, we have the universal terminal of the ECU, and this is ISOBUS. So what that means is that no matter what display, ISOBUS display you've got this plugged into, it'll look like this. So in the example here, I can turn the belt on, and it'll start spreading. You can see we're applying product at 100 kilos a hectare, and up the top here, we've got a theoretical weight. Now, if this is paired with load cells, that weight will be actual. If it's not, it'll be theoretical. So um, yeah, I've also got a crop spec hooked up to this. So what the crop spec is, is you would have saw one in the video. Can we see that? Yeah. So the crop spec camera here is this is mounted on your sprayer or spreader and it looks down and um, it, it looks down and gets a reading off the crop of reflectance and that is measure, measuring the chlorophyll content. So I've actually got the crop spec hooked up here and we've got a few hooked up out the back. And so what we can see is we can see the crop specs working in field. So at the moment, I've got these set up so that it, it's reading the crop at the moment. And it's reading a, can we see that? A crop spec reading here, and that's equating to a rate. So we can actually control our rate on the go. We can also easily go to our guidance screen by just swiping out. And here we have the guidance of where we've been. So it's very easy to go between the screens. We can literally just swipe out, go between the two displays. And so that is the Athene controller. Moving across to the Apollo sprayer. So below, if we pan down, we can see the ECU. This is the unit that's mounted on the sprayer. And this is very powerful because it's scalable. You can stack them together and you can get, um, you can get a lot of features with this solution. So once again, this is a typical solution of what an Apollo sprayer would look like. So at the moment, you can see the guidance screen here. And then we can see our sprayer control up here. So we're doing 100 litres a hectare and we can simply put that up and down to easily change our rate. We can also swipe open where we get a lot more information on the sprayer controller. So in this controller here, this is fully customizable. So we can simply click on any box and display what we want to see. So for example, in here we have application rate, area remaining and volume remaining. I can simply tick any of these and it will display on the, on the console. Some other features that the Apollo ECU has that are very, very handy uh, is the area counters. So I can either have area counting running via, uh, via task or via implement. So for example, if you wanted to track the total area uh, over a spray job over multiple fields, we can do it over implement and you can leave that running. Another feature is we can add external outputs to the Apollo. So here I've got a fill station light. I can also hook up right tilt, left tilt, for example, and you can control them outputs through the Apollo ECU. Another feature that's quite, quite useful here is the recipe calculator. So I can actually go in here and if I've am if I'm got a tank mix and I want to do more than one chemical in a spray, I can go in here, I can preload my products and I can actually go through. So here I'm saying I want to spray 50 hectares at 100 litres and I've got a 4,000 litre tank. So I can hit next, it comes up, you can see the chemicals here, I've got chemical one, chemical, chemical two, and an adjuvant. This is all preloaded. I hit next, and it tells me that I'm going to need two tankfuls, and it's also got here how much I need to load of every product. So I'll just hit yes on that, and now I can go and spray that product. Now with the Apollo ECU, it's also ISOBUS, so this is currently hooked into the console natively, which means that it integrates with the Topcon software, but we can also use it as an ISO bus controller. So that is a quick summary of the Apollo ECU. Moving across now to the NORAC height control. Sorry, Michelle. That's all right, I'll trade you in. 
So here on a Top Gun XD Plus monitor, we have NORAC height control. So uh, NORAC height control can be mounted to most sprays on the market. Um, there's the sensors. Can you just pass me a sensor, please, Michelle? Uh, the, the height control. Oh, height control. Yeah, sure. I have one of those under here. So this is an ultrasonic sensor that is mounted on your boom spray. Depending on your application and the terrain, there'll either be three or five of these sensors. And so when they are hooked into a spraying system, uh, you just, you, your user interface will look like this. So here, unfortunately, because we're not actually plugged into a real sprayer, we can't get the live readings. But if you were, you would get your sensor heights here and then you get your requested height here. So all we do is put in our requested height, whether in this example, 70 centimetres, we hit auto and away we go. Our sprayer will control automatically to that height. So that's a quick summary of the products on the wall. Uh, I believe we'll get into some, some live questions. And what about this one, Matt? Did you want to uh, Ah, yes, the ASC-10. Yeah, so with the ASC-10, uh, the, Apollo, uh, the Apollo ECU is isobus and it. native. Sorry, Michelle. But for basic spraying application, we can use the ASC-10 as well. So this would do rate control and section control. Uh, but a lot of them features it just showed on the Apollo, the ASC-10 is not capable of that. So if you're just looking for a basic spreading solution, the ASC-10 can do that. Thank you for that, Matt. Now, um, we do have some pre-registered questions here that I would like to go through. Sure. We can answer. So I've got a question here from Jim. Can, Jim wants to know, can you please explain which of the controllers are ISOBUS and which are not? I think you've covered some of it, um, but yeah, if you can please clarify. Yeah, sure. Thanks for the question, Jim. So, of the controllers I just went through, the Athene spreader controller on my left here is ISOBUS, and so that can be mounted uh, on most uh, trailed granular spreaders, and it will uh, populate on any third-party display. So is the Apollo ECU. That is ISOBUS and native, so that can be either. The NORAC on my right is ISOBUS as well, and the ASC-10 here is not. That can only be used with the Topcon X console. Thanks for the question, Jim. Right, uh, another question here, a pre-registered question from Liam. Can Topcon control multiple line sprayers? Thanks, Liam. Yes, Topcon can control multi-line sprayers. So the Apollo ECU can do up to four lines. So usually what we'll do, or well the most common example that we see here in Australia and New Zealand is dual line. So that'll be, it'll control either one line, the second line, or they'll both come on at once. And you can enter in the flow that you want it to change at and uh, it'll change automatically. Yep. Brilliant. Thanks, Matt. Uh, another question here from Jeremy. Can you cover some of the VRC functions intact to console? So from a third party, example, load a Trimble or John Deere yield map and send to the X console. Okay, okay. Yeah, we can. Uh, so just to, just to quickly explain, those who do not know, TAP is Topcon's data uh, transfer platform. So top, uh, TAP stands for Topcon Agricultural Platform. And so what we can do is if you've got a, a BRC map, a variable rate map that's been loaded into, uh, it's been created in a third party, we can load that into TAP and it will automatically send to an X console. So it's essentially acting as a wireless USB. So yes, yes, we can do that. Great. I've got another question here and this is from Phil. He would like to know, was the farmer in the video turning the nozzles on and off by tablet? Yes, he was actually, Phil. Good pick up. So we actually preempted this question and thought it might come up. So we've actually got an example of this being used in field. The feature's called Extend and we've got a good video that explains how to do it. G'day, I'm Wall. Uh, we're currently standing on my farm in Melrose, South Australia, approximately 300 kilometres north of Adelaide. Uh, and I'm here today to show you how Extend can make a farmer's life easier uh, with several different applications. Uh, we're focusing on boom sprays today. Uh, one of the daily things that we'll do with the boom spray uh, to ensure efficiency and good product placement is we'll check the nozzles to make sure they're, they're not blocked. If you get a blocked spray nozzle, then you won't be applying product efficiently over that, over that part of that section. So you'll end up with misses, which leads to more weeds and stuff. So traditionally what we would do is we'd have to turn the sections on one at a time, which requires returning to the tractor cab, turn a section on, come back, check to see if there's blocked nozzles, go back, turn to the next section and come back. So there's a lot of movement around the uh, boom spray. So 
what we're here to do today is to show you how Extend can improve that, pro that process quite a bit. So today we're using a Topcon X35 console, which is running the Horizon software. Uh, this is what I use for all of my auto steering and spraying applications. Um, so we'll open the spray controller. Now this is what I use for controlling the boom spray. Um, and so we'll go from here. So this is where I control my boom spray from. Uh, what I need to do now is turn on section one, which I do from the switch box here. You can see it's gone green. That means it's spraying. So I leave the cabin, walk around to the back of the boom spray, follow along behind that section that's spraying, check to make sure all of the section, all of the nozzles are spraying okay. Return to the cabin, turn that section off, turn on the next section and repeat. If one of those does have a block nozzle, then I'll come back up here, turn it off, go back around, turn the, uh, work out which nozzle was blocked, fix that, come back, turn it on again. So the whole process of checking spray nozzles would be a hell of a lot easier if I could take the console down the back with me, but as you can see, unfortunately, it's quite well mounted in the cabin, not very mobile. So that's where the Topcon Extend feature uh, comes into it with this new technology we've got. So I can use any mobile device uh, with the Topcon Extend feature and actually do all of this operation from down the back behind the boom spray. So we'll open the Topcon Extend app, which is available from the App Store, can be run on any mobile device that you have. Uh, so now from here I can open my spray controller user interface, which is showing the exact same spray controller uh, user interface that we had running on Horizon before on the console. So you can see my switch box across the bottom, my tanks, all the same view, all the same controls, all the same functionality. So now that we've got this spray controller user interface on my mobile device, I can easily leave the cabin, go down to the boom spray where I need to perform this operation and run it all from my mobile device. So we're back at the boom, ready to check our nozzles by turning the sections on and off, which we can now do from our mobile device. Just by pressing the button here, I can turn each section on or off as I need to. So now I'm up to testing section four. I turn my section on, down here by the spray. I can check all of my nozzles as I walk along. One of them isn't working, so turn the section off. Give the nozzle a clean. Turn it back on, go back. Then I fix my problem the whole time I'm down by the spray. This one's done, I can move on to the next section. And now I can turn on section 5 and walk along and check to see if all of those nozzles are working. Which they are. So now we've completed testing our uh, nozzles, we've checked them all, they're all okay. Uh, we've done everything from the back of the boom spray using our mobile device, wirelessly connected, it's been seamless, and I'm ready to go spraying. So another use for the Topcon Extend feature, um, if you have an ISOBUS virtual terminal uh, with a ECU uh, running on that, you can actually bring that um, ISOBUS VT onto your mobile device. So you can see it, you can operate with it, you can interact with it. Uh, that allows you to do similar things outside of the cabin as we did from Horizon. Um, as well as that, it can free up screen space so if I want to have my guidance screen up I can have my ISO bus VT on my mobile device with my guidance screen and full screen on my X35 console.
Thanks, Farmer Wall. <laughs> For those of you who are watching, just to clarify, if you'd like to join the live chat, you need to click on the link to watch it on YouTube. Then you can join that live chat, send us in your messages. Now, um, Matt, just going back to that video, um, compliments of Wall, can you just further explain, and I think you've got an example here of Extend so that users can see that. Yeah, sure, I've actually got my iPad hooked up to Extend here. So it's hooked up here, if we can see that, and uh, that is literally replicating the Athene to the left of me, and I can control that all from my iPad and turn it on and off. So uh, yeah, very easy to use and very good feature. Uh, another, um I guess, um, point out of that video, we saw sections turning off and on. Can you show us how, how that's actually controlled? On the sprayer? Yeah, on sure. On the sprayer. So just behind me on the Apollo sprayer, I probably didn't go into it detail just before. So at the moment, we're spraying along and the screens are very customizable. So I can actually view a virtual section box uh, on my screen, which you can see pop up here. And when I go over sprayed area, they'll automatically turn off or I can go through myself and turn off any of these sections that I want. And you can see them turning off on the screen. Uh, you can also pick where you want to display it. So if I want to display it down the bottom left hand side, I can open it and turn them on and off here. And if I also open my spray controller right up, once again, I get my virtual switch box on the screen. So very customizable and easy to do. So, so yeah, thanks for that question. Um, Great, so another question that's come in um, from Sophia. Can you use more than one mobile device at the same time when using Extend? Uh, no, Extend will just hook up to one mobile device at a time. Can you switch between the two though? Yeah, easily switch, so you can set up multiple units. Uh, the, the app's free to download from the App Store, so you can just easily download it and hook up um, Yeah, once you've got the app. And um, for those who are new to the app, Extend, it is actually spelt X-T-E-N-D, if you're looking that up on the, on the app or Google, Google Play Store. Uh, so we have another question here, Matt. Uh, it's from Braden. Can you engage the steering of the tractor? Uh, in real life, we can, yeah. But here on these uh, demos, no, we can't because we don't have any steering wheels or steering controllers hooked up. So no, this is just for simulating purposes. So these consoles cannot be engaged with steering. Actually, um, here's a, another good one for you, Matt, just going back to Extend. Sarah's um, just sent in a message. Can you use Extend as a second screen in the cab? Absolutely, and that's one of the uses for it. So uh, it's, not only, um, it, it's not only for uh, display purposes like we're doing now, but a lot of people will mount their Extend uh, as a second display in the cab. And that, what that means is that they then get an extra monitor and then they can also just quickly grab that off Go down to their um, go down to their implement and do some calibrations. So yeah, good question. Great, and another live one's come in from Terry here. Does Extend work on all ECUs? Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. If it's ISO bus, it'll uh, it'll work and it'll extend straight onto your your tablet or phone. If it's integrated into the Topcon software, like the Apollo or the Crop Spec or the Guidance, it'll work as well. So uh, yeah, it does. It does work on all the ECUs. And um, this is a question from me, Matt. Um, what are the limitations on Extend for what you can and can't do on your iPad here? So I just closed it before, but um, what can we do on here or what can't we do on here that we would have to revert to, to here? And perhaps if you could explain to us why there's those certain limitations. Uh, there's very few limitations. Uh, I can turn the master switch on and off. Uh, so. I've literally just pressed the master switch and it's turned the Athene on to the left of me. Um, I can take full control. Uh, the only limitation is really distance, so um, it, it will drop out when you get uh, further away from the uh, we'll just show the viewers from, <laughs> did then. from the vehicle uh, or tractor. But uh, it, it's quite a it's quite a big distance. You should be able to get over 100 meters, um, but there's no need to be that far away. It probably won't get that far, but um, but there's no real need to go that far. So. Um, yeah, you can full control the master switch uh, from Extend and yeah, there is very few limitations. What you see on the Extend app is what you see on the screen. Okay, so um, we do have some more questions coming in here. Oh, actually we've um, got a, another question here and it's, can third party data be loaded into TAP? 
Is this one of the ones we have? I believe this was a, a question um, loaded, yeah. uh, sent in earlier by yeah, a video. Yeah, just a one uh, So do we have that question uh, We have a video for that. Yeah, point. yeah. Sure. Can we go to that, please? G'day, Top Con crew. It's Matt from uh, the mid-north of SA. I would like to know uh, what options are available for record keeping, um, as there's quite a lot of data available these days. It's hard to know where to um, save, view and analyse it. Thank you. Thanks for sending in that video question, Matt. Much appreciated. So on tap, we can load third party data. Yes. And it's very easy to do. Uh, so um, we've actually got a video on this as well because it was a preloaded question. Uh, we're ready for this one. So uh, if we can go to that and I'll just talk you through what is happening. So here is an example of John Deere yield data. So this is on a USB and literally all we do is zip it and drag it across into tap and then it will process and upload that data. So this can be done for any third party data in the form of shapefile, ISO task data, all Topcon data and also Trimble, John Deere and precision planting. So there's a wide, wide range of data we can import into tap and that'll help with job keeping. Great, thanks Matt. Now, um, that video was actually directly off our TAP knowledge base, so um, anyone can go in there. There's a whole lot of videos that just help people around some of those basic questions, people who are new to using TAP. Um, you don't need to register, just free for everyone, just jump on there. And just with TAP, it's, uh, if you Google TopCon TAP and just hit sign up, uh, it, it's free and you can get any data off your TopCon console. You might have years of data and you want somewhere to put it, so just jump on export the data off your console and then you'll be able to see all your field boundaries, all your previous jobs that have been done and view it in one place. So um, yeah, very handy tool. Worth doing. Yeah. Okay, so I've got um, some more registered questions here. One from Glenn. Yep. Will the crop spec mark the crop area that is lacking nitrogen or even detect a dead plant, Matt? Yeah, that's a good question. So the crop spec will, but what we have to remember with the crop spec is it's measuring reflectance. Uh, so it, it's really just measuring uh, the level of greenness in the crop, which is directly related to chlorophyll. So it will pick up uh, areas of deficiency, but that does need to be ground truth. With regards to the dead plant or, um, or, or areas that are, 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 are dying, um, it won't pick up a specific dead plant because it takes an average. So the footprint might be say four to six metres. So if there's one dead plant in that area, it won't pick it up. But if there's a, a large area that, that is dead and showing signs, um, uh, showing signs of stress, then yeah, it, it will pick that up. Thanks, Matt. Uh, another question here from Andrew. How am I best to manage my as-applied data sets to measure profitability and to enhance my future decision making using the Topcon suite of products? Yeah, sure. So going back to TAP, uh, if you load all your data into TAP, and we can do this wise wirelessly if your console is hooked up to the internet, or manually via USB. So once that data is in there, you can actually put a value against each product. And then because it knows how much product's been spread, you can work out uh, what that application's cost. And you can also put that against yield. So if you've got uh, a, a total summary of uh, cost versus yield, um, TAP has a, a, a cost summary report and we can run that and, and, and get a representation of, of profitability. Yeah, yep. Okay, so we've just had another question come in live um, from Nigel. How can TAP work to get the tractor data? What is needed? Yeah, sure. So to hook your console up to the internet, you either need uh, a third party modem or a CloudLink modem. So the, the CloudLink modems are in the form of a CL10 and a CL55. So once we've hooked them up to a console, and you have a cellular connection, as soon as you complete that task, it'll actually go straight into TAP automatically. So that's a good way to do it wirelessly. If not, you can do it manually via USB and all that data will come across, but you will have to zip it and load it like in that video we just saw. Right. I've got another question here from Gareth. Gareth says, we've recently purchased a new Borgo bar and box for next year and upgraded it to the X. 35 monitor. To cut down on monitors in the cab, can I change my GPS system to a Topcon system that runs through the X35 screen? 
and I still want um, 2.5 inch accuracy and next turn ability. If so, can the system then be transferred between tractors? Right, so I think we probably need to break this question up maybe into three parts. <laughs> it is. So I think the first question was, you're running an X35 on your Borgo monitor, uh, sorry, on your Borgo Bar. air cart, yeah, yeah. and you wanted to be able to integrate steering into it. Yes, you can certainly do that. We can add a, a Topcon AGS2, AGI4 onto the roof, and uh, then you can run your auto steer through it. Um, you certainly can. Uh, the next part of the question was, can you upgrade your accuracy to 2.5 inch, I think it was, which is about <laughs> six centimetres. So yeah, we, we can do that. Uh, so we have a satellite subscription um, that we could run to get that accuracy. So that would definitely be possible. And next turn, or headland turns uh, as we call it, is definitely available as well. So uh, to answer your question, yes, we can certainly do that. Uh, the last one was transferring between tractors. Oh, sorry, I missed the part. <laughs> yeah, so you can have one monitor and two lots of harnessing in, in separate tractors and easily transfer to the display. Um, so yeah, that can be done as well. <laughs> you, you, of course, still need GPS on both, correct? Yeah, you still yeah. need the receiver. So the receiver's transferable as well and so is the console. Yep. So, yeah. Brilliant, thanks, Matt. Um, another question here from Alex. Athene plus scale link solution, what does that mean? Sure. So with the Athena here on the left, that's the spreader module. So currently uh, we don't have a, a weighing module here to display, but we can hook load cells up to it. So when we hook load cells up to it, we use the scale link. So when the scale link is used, we can actually use dynamic calibration. So we can calibrate on the go. So as it knows what weight's going out, and, and we can actually adjust that calibration factor on the go. And at the top of the display, I'm not sure if we can see it just here, at the top, when you're using scales, that reading's actually live of watching your bin. So when it's empty, it, it will read zero, and when it's full, you'll get uh, how much product is in your bin. Thank you, Matt. And Jonathan, there's another um, question here from Jonathan. Are we going to be able to stack all the as-applied maps to make one heat map for the season to identify any problems or areas, problem areas that there may be? Yeah, sure. So I assume you're talking about in TAP there. So at the moment, TAP will view a single layer and we can put it over imagery, but you cannot stack multiple layers over top of each other. They can all be viewed uh, one by one, but you cannot create a heat map and overlay the, the layers at the moment, unfortunately, no. Okay. Um, and again, another reminder, if you're wanting to join in that live chat, you do need to open up um, the YouTube. So you need to be viewing this on YouTube and then the live chat becomes available to you. Now I've got another question here from Peter. Do you need to change any settings between crops when using the crop spec sensors? Right, thanks Peter. Uh, depends. So. Depends whether you're, depends on the differences in your crop really. So for example, if you had two paddocks of wheat at a very similar growth stage, you would probably be able to go from one to the other. But if you were going from a completely different crop type from one to the other, then yeah, the crop spec will need to be set up and changed uh, so you get the best results. Yeah, yep. Great, thanks Matt. Um, so another reminder again about the competition, we're giving away an um, XD and AGM1 manual um, guidance system. It's valued at roughly 4,700 Australian dollars. Um, good value, good introduction into the market. Now, if you want to get into that competition, you do need to register. Um, register can be by way of just clicking on it to join this um, live chat and then send us in a question. As soon as we, even if we don't ask, and ask your que question today live, that still gives you the ability to go in the draw to win the competition. That's going to be drawn uh, next Friday, I think it is, Matt, on 22nd. Um, so, yeah, please get your entry in. What have you got to lose? Good quality equipment and, yeah, good value for you. We should probably show them what they've got to win as well. So we actually have an XD here. So here is the console uh, that you will go in the, in the draw to win. We don't have the AGM1 here, though, do no, we? No, we don't have no. the receiver, but the AGM1 is a manual guidance receiver. Um, and the XD here is Topcon's new entry-level console, uh, it's ISO bus and can be fully upgraded to uh, majority of the features with the X35 behind us. 
Right, uh, another um, question's come in here from Steve. ISABUS TC Geo Compliant, what does that mean? <laughs> right, okay. This is probably another question we need to break up. So we've got ISABUS, we've got TC, and we've got Geo. So I probably skipped over it earlier, but ISOBUS is the ability for any monitor or controller to be displayed on an ISOBUS compatible screen. So for example, the Athene on my left here is ISOBUS compatible. So whether this was populated on a Topcon X35 or a third party ISOBUS screen, that's what it would look like and that is the monitor. And then we have extra features with ISOBUS touches as TC and Geo. So TC stands for Task Controller and what that does is it allows the Topcon X35 to integrate with the ISOBUS ECU so we can actually tell it when to turn on and off. So really is, uh, Task Controller really is section control. We're able to control the ISOBUS ECU through section control. And Geo is really Geo referencing anything to do with that ISOBUS ECU. So really variable rate map. So if you load a variable rate map into the X35, the Athene as is an ISOBUS capable controller with TC Geo, will be able to control your variable rate maps. So good question. So uh, another question come in. I think this is a pre-registered one from Hayden. Can I load maps from a third-party guidance system? Sure. So oh. this is another, another one that probably depends on what you're coming from. But we can import boundaries and AB lines from most third-party displays using a converter. Uh, you can't plug it straight in, but you can use a converter to get the data in. It's pretty simple. So if you want to do that, just get in touch with your local dealer or, or us at Topcon, and we can definitely help you through that for sure. Great. Um, now, I think um, there was probably a couple of other features that you felt that you wanted to cover on some of these consoles here, Matt. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, we can. Yep, sure. So on the screen, um, we can go a little bit into a little bit more into customising the screen. So um, down the bottom here, we have the dashboard. So I can simply touch on that dashboard and it'll pop up very similar to the spray controller. We can go through and turn on and off whatever we don't want to see. So if I turn all these off, that whole dashboard down the bottom will just turn off and I can go through and customise whatever I want to see. Um, very similar to the spray controller here. So I open the spray controller up, I touch on this box, same thing again. So I can go through and turn off whatever I don't want to see and whatever I want to see. And that's, that's very good because it makes it customisable. Everyone's kind of got a different way of what they want the screen to look like. So you can customise it to whatever you want to see. And also before with section control, I didn't go through it, but it's very easy to toggle on and off. Just go through and turn it off. So I've just turned auto section control off. Uh, there may be a time when you want to do that. I can go through and, and turn it back on. We've also got on the left uh, a, a quick job summary. So you can see your area worked, your area remaining, total distance travelled. And there's also a time feature here. So as it knows the field boundary, uh, and it also knows what speed you're averaging and how much, uh, yeah, how much work you're averaging per hour, we can get a time to finish on that job. So just a few handy features uh, that can be used on the X35. Yeah. Great. Um, thanks, Matt. I've had another live question come in from Simon. Uh, running an X35 with an ASC10 currently, what is involved in getting NORAC height control onto my boom spray? Yeah, sure. So uh, the X35 is compatible for NORAC. That's the first thing. Uh, the ASC10 um, is the spray rate controller, so it's, it's actually nothing to do with that. But if we find out the, the make and model of your sprayer and what sort of terrain you're working in, we can determine whether you need a three or five sensor system and um, that'll populate on your X35. And uh, yeah, so really just need to determine the make and model of your sprayer and we work out what you need, uh, but it'll definitely be possible. Great, thanks Matt. I've just got a, another one coming in here. Uh, looks like we're catching up a wee bit. I'm just wondering um, whether maybe we can just uh, cut to another video again and just keep those questions coming in live, everyone out there. So remember you need to actually click on the link and go to the YouTube channel to view this and then that opens up the chat. You then send us in a live question that puts you into the entry to win the competition. 
Crop care is a multi-stage, multi-faceted and intricate part of agriculture. From seeding control to nutrient spreading to spraying and boom control to crop monitoring. At Topcon, we've designed a number of interconnected solutions built on our time and field tested range of products that all serve this vital operation. Crop care begins with proper nutrient management. Whether dealing with commercial fertilizers or organic sources, it's important to have economically and environmentally sustainable farm operations. When considering your spreading operations, the Athene Plus Scale Link solution from Topcon offers greater functionality for premium spreader owners. When paired with the ISOBUS UT, the Athene Plus Scale Link Spreader Control solution provides premium spreaders with variable rate functionality. Some of the key features are accurate and variable rate applications responsive to different field areas and conditions, manual or automatic adjustment rates according to predefined treatment maps, ISOBUS TC GEO compliance, automatic on-off spreading to avoid overlap and misses. We've been the industry leader in spraying technology for 20 years and we're proud to share the future of spraying technology in our Apollo application controllers. When it comes to spraying control, Topcon offers a progressive and future-proof solution. Equipped with impactful features including fence jet nozzle support and recipe calculator, as well as direct software support via Pentair Hydro ProStop e-valves, farmers can now control 200 plus sections down to individual nozzles, giving incredibly precise spray application. When coupled with the Topcon Agriculture Platform or TAP, Farmers can upload various data such as soil, seed, yield and as applied to improve spraying decisions. With technology based on Topcon's core competency in optics, CropSpec is an industry-leading, real-time crop monitoring solution that allows users to monitor in-field variability, treat on the go or keep data for future analysis. CropSpec is a one or two sensor configuration that is light and easy to install. With the largest sensor footprint in the industry, the sensor uses pulsing laser diodes to measure plant reflectance to determine chlorophyll content based on nitrogen concentration in the leaf. This non-destructive method provides accurate, stable readings with insights that help reduce fertilizer costs and can create prescription maps or prescribe and apply in a single pass. In order to utilize the improved capabilities of both sprayers and precision capabilities, automation is increasingly important. Our NORAC boom height control provides consistent preset height for even application and reduced drift. Our UC7 boom height control solution makes responsive height adjustments allowing booms to automatically follow the contours of the land or height of crop. The ultrasonic sensors are capable of day and night or high-speed operation and the solution is designed for ease of use with compatibility across a wide range of machines in standalone or ISOBUS capabilities. Together, our crop care solutions allow the hardest jobs to be done with ease and precision. Right, welcome back. So um, we just had another question come in um, asking us about um, TAP. Now, I just want to clarify, TAP Knowledge Base, um, that has a lot of videos on there, an awful lot of videos for people who are wanting to know anything about um, how to do anything with TAP. You don't need to register, do go on there. Um, this is a crop care or specific to crop care, this live Q&A, so yeah, we'll leave that until we get to a TAP q and um, I do have another question here. I'm not sure um, how easily this one's going to be able to answer though, Matt. It's from Nigel. Again, I think it's the same Nigel that was emailing before yep. um, or messaging before. Yep. What are the limitations between the various consoles for section control to variable rate that you've shown us today on the X35 slash XD? Yeah, sure. So the X35 comes fully unlocked and ready to go for variable rate control, section control, um, whereas the XD, uh, so the XD here and the XD plus on my right, 
doesn't come unlocked with variable rate or section control. It can be scaled up and unlocked pretty much to a X35, but those are the main two with regards to spraying. It's also uh, only the XD Plus is capable of one tank uh, for a sprayer. So if you're looking at doing a dual tank, you, you will need an unlock for additional sprayer tanks. So, yep. Great, thank you. Um, so I've got a, another question coming in. Um, does Topcon do individual nozzle control system conversions for converting standard sprayers? So it is possible with high pro E nozzles. Uh, we can do isobus sprayers as well, um, up to 200 sections. Uh, 200 nozzles, and we can use uh, what's called high pro E nozzles to do individual section control as well. Yeah, that was the one that was in the video, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, another question just come in here does uh, no, that's the same one. Sorry yeah, same about one. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I guess while there is actually people still typing, I can see them coming through. One thing I do need to say, and we did say at the beginning um, when we started, if we don't manage to answer all of your questions, we will still answer them if they weren't um, covered live. Um, so yeah, pl please do keep sending them in. Um, you are still eligible for uh, entry into that competition by sending in those questions. So even after the fact, now I think the original um, marketing on YouTube, Facebook, um, I think we were even in LinkedIn, um, that might have said that it closed at the start of the session. We've actually extended that out so you can continue to send in those questions and you will still get a response. Uh, now I've just had another two more come in. Uh, or three, okay. <laughs> uh, so, can from Phil, can we transfer guidance lines between an X35 console, um, i.e. they're talking about coverage maps, with two or more spreaders in one field? We certainly can. And that's a new feature that has come in called Machine Link. So what we can do is, uh, yeah, if we have two consoles in the same field, on the same task, we can we can hook up and see where the other one is in the field and see where it's been. So the advantage of that is it allows section control to work off the other implements. So if you're uh, if you've got another uh, sprayer or spreader in the field and it's already spread in an area of the paddock, it'll uh, automatically turn off because it'll know where it's been. So yeah, w we can do that. Yeah, yep. Thank you, Matt. Um, uh, another couple of questions have come in. So from Peter. What's the top speed you could travel while using crop spec sensors? The limitation is probably down to your tractor or sprayer uh, and what it'll engage at. So different vehicle profiles have different engage speeds that they'll work up to for safety features. So the limitation isn't really in the crop spec, it's probably more in, in the vehicle profile and how it's set up. But it, it'll work over, over 20 kilometres an hour. Um, so yeah, the limitation isn't really in the crop spec. Thanks, man. Um, another one, I think it's the same, Peter. Um, what's the ideal height of a crop spec sensor above the crop? Sure. So this is one that's not really black and white. Uh, we've done a lot of trial work uh, in New Zealand and we've found that actually sometimes having the crop spec lower can be better. Um, and uh, in Australia, most of them are actually mounted up on, on the edge of the tractor or sprayer. So typically the ideal height is actually off the edge of your cab. So you're looking at around four metres roughly. Um, but there are, there are examples when we have made it, uh, mounted them between one and a half to two metres off the ground. So it kind of depends on your environment and, and what you're looking to achieve. But ideally, they're, they're mounted off the cab. Yeah, yep. Right, I think we have almost caught up on questions. Yep. Um, so maybe, Matt, if you can just summarise for us. Um, what makes Topcon's crop care um, approach world class? What do you believe that is? What are, the, what are our main features for crop care to the customer? Yeah, sure. So essentially it's ease of use. So all our, all our um, ECUs and displays are set up to really make the user um, feel comfortable and just be able to customise it and make it as simple or as advanced as they like. So um, it's easy to use, it's easy to set up um, and really all our, all our solutions are designed it maximising efficiency and making your life easy as possible while also um, being able to use uh, one solution on your farm, whether it's spraying, spreading uh, and, and even seeding, weighing, data management. 
there's a lot of solutions that we haven't gone in today. So uh, when you tie it all together, it's uh, yeah, really beneficial for the farmer. So. Right, um, I've just actually found a couple more questions oh, have come through here. <laughs> yeah, they are still coming in, so we may as well answer them. Yeah, sure. Um, I've got uh, from Ian, crop spec footprint um, is largest in, in the industry. What is that footprint? And I think you kind of did touch on it to some extent. But if you can yeah, go. so this is another one that can change because if you'd imagine this on the, on the roof of a tractor or sprayer, um, how we set it up, we can actually change the angle of it. So as soon as you change the angle and the height, it changes the reading on the ground. So uh, there's a few variables there, but typically they're kind of four to six metres. It can be, can be a little more, can be a little less. Uh, so if you have the, one of them on each side of your sprayer, uh, you, you know, you could be getting an average of, of 12 metres across the crop. So, um, but yeah, it, it, it does depend on, on how you mount them. I've got a, another live question come in from Matthew. You talked about stacking the Apollos. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, sure. So just behind me, uh, I can see the Apollo ECU. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but um, there you go. So these are designed so they can, be, they can be stacked. And by stacked, what we mean is that um, this is the main control module and we can also add expansion modules to the CM40. And what that allows us to do is get extra outputs. So some examples of where we might use this is if we wanted extra sections um, or if we wanted to configure extra outputs such as uh, tank fill, boom lift, that sort of thing. So yeah, w we can stack them, yep. Great, thanks. Um, and I guess an, another um, reminder to people out there, so um, this live stream will go onto the YouTube channel, so if anyone wants to catch up who have mi missed it or you've only caught part of it, you can go online and um, in about a week you'll see that there, the replay of that. And we've, oh, here's another question through here. So this one is from Stuart. If using an Athene spreader and variable rate control to apply prescription rates, in what instances would you use manual rate adjustment? So if you were using the Athene spreader controller and you were using a variable rate map and you wanted to manually change the rate, uh, I assume that's kind of what we're talking about here yeah, is that we just we can easily switch from variable rate to, to um, automatic control and by automatic control it'll control to proportional to forward speed and you can just enter in a rate so if you're in a zone and you don't want to do that rate you can simply go out of variable rate mode and, and quickly choose what rate you want to do. And here's another one here um, that's probably related from Bryce. Are the Athene controllers only for the aftermarket? No, no they're not. There's uh, there's a lot of local manufacturers here in Australia that are using the Athene from factory and also overseas, and we do sell them aftermarket as well. So they can be retrofitted or, um, or yeah, mounted at factory, and you'll see them on a lot of spreader controllers. Uh, if you walk around at a field day uh, or, or somewhere like that, you will see a lot of Athene ECUs mounted to, to factory spreaders. So I've got a, um, another one which we probably, I expected someone might have sent it through earlier, but they, um, that's come through. Jeff, can the Topcon consoles be logged into remotely for support? Absolutely, and this is a tool we use quite regularly. So as soon as your console has got uh, internet access, um, you can hotspot from a phone or you can hook it up to a modem that's just uh, when it's on the, the console is receiving uh, data, and we can log in. So there's an app in the App Store called Horizon Remote Support. It's free, you can download onto any tablet or mobile device, and anyone around the world can log in and take control of your console. The only limitations with that is that we cannot turn the master switch on or engage the auto steering, and that's just for safety reasons. So, yeah, that's definitely possible. Great. And just some of these How questions here. <laughs> well, we've we've um, answered most of them, and I just don't want to answer the same one twice. Um, Maybe I think, um, yeah, another reminder, competition, you can still go in the draw, keep sending in the questions, even when we finish live here, um, you can still be eligible by going through the registration process, um, otherwise maybe you can close out, Matt, and just um, summarise, yeah, uh, yeah, what you think, yeah. um, why, top, why top con crop care um, for you as an employee, um, yeah. why it means so much to you and what you think, why it outshines maybe other um, competitors' products out there. 
Yeah, sure. Thanks, Michelle. Well, first of all, thanks everyone for joining. Um, it's been uh, it's been a great experience to do this. Uh, obviously, field days are getting harder and harder to get to. Um, so we thought that this would be a, a good opportunity to do something like this. So we hope you've all enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, pretty much what I said before, we're, we're really focused on um, maximising the efficiency and making your life as easy as possible, uh, no matter what solution it is. So thanks again, everyone, for joining. Um, really appreciate the questions that come through. They've been great. Um, and yeah, and don't stop you. with them. Yeah. Keep them coming yeah. in. We'll get back to all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.